Hello everyone, if you're new here, I'm Alan with Earthglow and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. In today's video, I wanted to kind of do a fact versus fiction video on paraffin wax, fully refined paraffin. Even though it is not a wax that I work a lot with in my own candle making, as a biochem major, I wanted to address some of the common myths related to paraffin wax. I also plan on testing some fully refined paraffin and parasoy waxes uh, like IGI 6006, IGI 4627, and then I believe IGI 4625. Um, that I've gotten a lot of questions about on this channel, but I haven't felt like I could really answer due to my lack of experience, uh, my lack of personal experience working with uh, fully refined paraffin wax. And I would say that whether or not you choose to work with paraffin uh, in your own candle making, that it's really important to be versed with it because it's what a lot of people in reality are going to be comparing your candles to. Uh, candles from Bath & Body Works, Yankee Candle, pretty much all your big box stores, um, are gonna be made from paraffin. Anyways, if this kind of content interests you, then consider subscribing. I am always posting candle business-related videos and also educational videos like this. My intention in this video is just to provide you with some basic information about paraffin, fully refined paraffin that is used in candle wax. It is not to try to sway you to use this wax or to not use this wax uh, in your own candle making. <laughs> but anyways, let's get right into today's video and I hope that you enjoy. So let's get started. Number one, fact or fiction. Paraffin is a petroleum byproduct and it is basically the crud scraped from the bottom of petroleum barrels. Uh, this is a fact. Um, it, it literally is a petroleum waste product. However, that also means that paraffin is basically upcycled, which I think is really neat. It's taking things that would otherwise be waste and making it into something that we can use and make really great candles out of after it has been fully refined and our reputable candle suppliers have gotten a hold of the fully refined paraffin wax. Number two, paraffin is dangerous and toxic. Well, I'd say that this one is misleading. What if I told you that mineral oil, that you were gonna make some candles out of mineral oil? and some of you may already know where I'm going with this one, but mineral oil is fully refined paraffin. And we don't usually think of mineral oil as something that's gonna be dangerous or it's gonna to be toxic. There is a really big difference between fully refined paraffin and unrefined paraffin. And it's really important when we're making candles, and as I mentioned earlier, most of our reputable suppliers are already gonna be only carrying this, um, but it's really important when we're making candles to have that fully refined uh, paraffin wax. And when we're working with fully refined paraffin, studies have proven, and I will link some of the studies, I'm talking about scholarly studies, not blogs or tertiary sources, I'm talking about scholarly published studies, um, they have proven that paraffin wax, fully refined paraffin wax, uh, can burn just as cleanly as beeswax, as coconut wax, as soy wax, as palm wax, etc. Number three, paraffin wax has been used forever in candle making. Well, I'm calling this one fiction because paraffin really didn't come into the market in candles until the mid 19th century. Um, again, it has to do with when the petroleum industry uh, really started becoming prominent in the market. And um, so that would be the mid 19th century. The oldest known candle wax to humankind is actually beeswax. And beeswax has been around for thousands and thousands of years. Um, and it is still one of my favorite waxes to work with today in my own candle making. Most of you know that I tend to blend different waxes and almost always use beeswax in my blends. Number four, paraffin does not burn cleanly. Well, this one I'm also gonna say is misleading. And the reason for this is because paraffin can have a tendency to produce more soot, i.e. not burn as cleanly. However, that is often because people who are making the candles in the first place are using wicks that are not the right wicks for paraffin. <laughs> paraffin burns at a much lower temperature than soy wax and beeswax, and paraffin is going to require, because of that, much smaller wicks. So. People who are working successfully with paraffin wax are typically gonna be using your HTP wicks as well as your Premier Series and sometimes LX wicks. 
Paraffin is cheap. People who are using paraffin are using it because they don't wanna buy soy wax or nicer, more expensive waxes. Yes and no. It really depends on the type of paraffin wax you're talking about. Uh, some paraffin waxes are gonna be much cheaper than your average soy waxes, but some are gonna be around the same price. And uh, it, it really, like I said, just depends on which paraffin wax you're talking about and which soy wax or soy blend um, you are talking about. Paraffin produces the best scent throw of any wax. And I would say that this is a pretty solid fact. However, I would say that uh, parasoy candles, so those paraffin soy blends, are kind of the best of both in a way uh, for a lot of candle makers because of the fact that the soy is gonna have better scent retention and the paraffin is going to have the better hot throw, but the soy is gonna have not only that scent retention, but also produce a better cold throw. So having kind of that con combination of waxes will give you that synergy uh, overall um, is what a lot of candle makers do find. And last but not least, probably the one that we hear most often is candle makers. Paraffin gives me a headache. I cannot burn paraffin candles because they give me an allergic reaction like a headache or a migraine. And this is definitely a fact. Uh, some people are very sensitive to paraffin. Uh, some people are also very sensitive to soy. It's another common allergen. And sometimes people are sensitive to the fragrances themselves or different aromatic chemicals. Uh, could be natural, could be lab produced in the fragrances and or essential oils that you're using. And probably the elephant in the room is that some people don't trim their wicks when they're burning their candles, therefore causing them to produce a lot of soot and smoke, and this can definitely cause a headache. And another big elephant in the room that I wanna mention is fragrance oils. So fragrance, um, for those of you who are scared about you know, wax types and all that kind of stuff, fragrance is something that you really wanna focus more on because fragrance can be toxic. A lot of fragrances are toxic, and I'm talking about they can contain reproductive toxins, which means that they can cause damage to the reproductive system. And then there's also organ toxins, so toxins that can adversely affect a single organ in the body or organ systems. Um, and then there's also acute toxins, which are gonna be those highly dangerous chemicals that have the skull and crossbones uh, warning pictogram on the safety data sheet. And those ones are gonna cause adverse effects with a single exposure or a series of exposures, usually within 24 hours. And I would say you need to avoid them at all costs. And there still are some candle suppliers, even reputable ones that have fragrances that they're selling that have, that require these warning pictograms. And, so anyways, all that to say that fragrance is something that is really important to focus on in terms of uh, avoiding toxins, but then there's also mutagens. And then there's also going to be uh, Prop 65 chemicals, carcinogens. Uh, so we can go on and on. Phthalates are another broad category um, that you can find in a lot of fragrances um, because they cause them to generally last longer and linger longer um, and store better too. But uh, these are all things that I, in my own practice, tend to focus on and center my business around avoiding. And that involves scrupulously looking over um, the fragrance SDS, the safety data sheets, because this is where uh, the majority of those dangerous chemicals, uh, natural and lab produced. Natural is another whole discussion, and I will try to link my video above um, on how I vet fragrances, but a lot of people think, oh, I'm only using essential oils, so, uh, you know, I don't have anything to worry about in my candles. That is far from the case. Uh, just because something is natural does not mean that it is safe uh, whatsoever. But again, I'm not gonna get too far into that one. I will try to link my video um, on that in the description box or above if I'm able to um, so that you can check that one out. And I think another really important topic to discuss is just candle safety in general. So wicking, making sure that your candle is not gonna burn crazy hot and cause the jar to crack and you know that your candle is wicked properly so that you don't get a bunch of soot because as I've always said uh, and again this comes from someone who uses a lot of beeswax and soy wax in my own candle business as well as coconut wax all of those waxes even though they are natural they can absolutely produce soot um, if the candle is improperly wicked or if you do not educate your buyer on how to properly care for their candle. Um, those candles can absolutely still produce soot. 
And soot is something that we really want to generally avoid because it just, it's not good for us to breathe in. Um, so whether you're dealing with paraffin, whether you're dealing with soy, coconut wax, beeswax, palm wax, uh, whatever, uh, making sure that the candle is safe and properly wicked and that you're choosing fragrance oils that are going to be non-toxic, you know, phthalate free, uh, carcinogen free, all those types of things, that's where I choose to focus uh, the heart of my candle making personally. Um, but you know, the choice is really yours and I would encourage you to, as I said at the beginning of the video, at least be versed in paraffin even if you don't plan on using it. Again, I'm talking about fully refined paraffin synonymous with mineral wax. And this is really important because a lot of our customers who love our candles in the first place um, and just love candles in general, have gotten a lot of their candles more than likely before at big box stores, at Bath and Body Works, at Yankee Candle, um, at places that are using paraffin or primarily paraffin in their waxes. And so they're going to be inevitably comparing your candles to those other candles as well. And it's important to at least have a baseline um, of what they're gonna be comparing your product to uh, more than likely. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, paraffin's not a wax that I tend to use a whole lot of, but it is a wax that I I at least want to be versed in. Again, fully refined paraffin. Unrefined paraffin is very dangerous, I think. Um, it's just not something that I want anything to do with. But that fully refined paraffin, which is gonna be synonymous with mineral oil, um, is something that a lot of candle makers choose to use because of how well uh, the scent comes through in paraffin wax. And that's just due to the chemical nature of the wax molecules themselves. And the combustion process itself is going to optimize uh, fragrance throw into the room, much more so than soy wax and most other natural, uh, very viscous vegetable waxes, which are gonna require a much greater temperature, a much greater amount of thermal energy in order to produce heat. And that's why we use bigger wicks with them, like our Eco Series, our CD, our CDN wicks. Um, but they're gonna require those so that the wax uh, can produce a sufficient, not only melt pool, but temperature of that melt pool in order to throw the fragrance into the room and produce a strong candle. But anyways, that's gonna be all for this one. If you enjoyed, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Let me know if you wanna see a part two on this or a continuation of these types of series where I talk about different controversial things in the candle world and just kind of my takes and opinions on them. I will also have in the description box uh, a lot of scholarly articles, like I said, that uh, I consulted in preparation for this video and just kind of throughout my candle making career that I think are really good articles that uh, probably everyone uh, should at least have access to and be able to, to read. Um, and anyways, I hope you did enjoy this video and I'm sending all of you peace, love, and light. And I'm wishing all of you happy candle making.